Continuing here. We'd all be working about five hours a week by now if we were doing useful jobs that were productive to society. We need very few things. And beyond that, all the luxury trinkets, knickknacks, on and on and on that we all crave. Okay, we could have all that too. We could have machines pumping out most of that stuff. We already have machines pumping out most of the wristwatches out there. Even people pay thousands of dollars for these watches. You realize, I mean, they're stamping these things out. It's just like houses today. We could have houses coming out our ears all over the world. We could have such a superfluity and excess uh, that uh, abundance, you know, that it's that's not funny. This is what we could have, okay, with a vastly lower work week. So we don't need to have crime, okay? So we don't need desperate poverty. We don't need dubious war. We don't need a national debt. We don't need a social welfare industry. We don't need all these problems we have. We could have a much lower work week. We've been trained to believe these things that don't rock the boat, man. we got to keep the status quo, the establishment in order. Keep it on this trajectory, this trend, this descent into hell. Basically, that's all it is when you keep on making people less free. I don't care how free you are because you found your way out financially. Okay, and you're well healed financially. No, man, if it's not working for everybody, if it's just making things harder for people in any segment of society, I don't care what trade it is. A job shouldn't exist if it's not important. All of us are important. All our jobs, that's just God speaking, man. It's, it's obvious. So if you're not sinking prescribing to the same philosophies and credos that God does, then you're unholy, you're unrighteous, okay? You're ungodly and you're anti-American and you're going to hell. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. You're missing the mark. You've got to be pure of heart. You've got to have clear thinking. And if you're, you've got to, if you're discombobulated, you go to God and say, help me. I, I need to recombobulate here. If I've got false pride, show me, God. Show me. I mean, is this guy really right? I mean, is there only one right answer here to this social, political, and economic morass we're in? You know, is there only one way out of this thing to extricate ourselves? Do, does everybody have to go and everybody have to be set free? Or can it be selective? And, you know, the people just have to buck up and get tougher and crack that ever harder nut and reach that ever higher bar in order to realize the American dream of home ownership and prosperity. Okay, that's what I'm saying here, folks. So, you know, if you wonder if you need to be forgiven, if you've been believing something other than that, you need to be forgiven. I... I wavered before i was confused about a lot of stuff okay but you know what i see the light man i'm over here in the clean clear waters i'm not just wiping my windshield i'm not into this gospel of, of prosperity gospel okay that just look after old number one and just it doesn't matter just divorce yourself from the plight of the poor and the you know don't pay any attention that's just gonna upset you ignorance is bliss remember that's their problem not yours that things keep getting harder, you know, you can actually benefit. You could be in the part here that's well healed financially and <coughs> out of fear financially. But God won't allow it. He won't allow you to be happy. You can have a pseudo faux sense of happiness, okay, but you're not going to ever attain it. You're not going to ever be right with him. When he comes, he's not going to know you. Okay, you need forgiveness and you don't even know it because you're floundering in fraud because the establishment is riddled. It's rife with fraud. So you can't prescribe to it. It doesn't need a little tweaking here and there. It needs a complete reset. It needs a sea change of biblical proportions. And yes, the bailout of 08, if we went, didn't allow that to, to go through, if 90 plus percent of the American people had gotten their way, we would see a whole different reality in America. We see a much kinder, gentler America, the one that JFK tried to give us through sound economic policy, sound money, okay? The one that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give us. He understood social, political, and economic matters. He knew that equality was the answer. He was a friend to humanity, not just to black people. It wasn't just about civil rights. What is civil rights? It's all about social cohesion, the welfare of society as a whole, okay? 
gradually we could come out of this thing. It doesn't have to be traumatic, but people aren't going to let it. That's why Jesus said it's a lot of people are going to be unready, unprepared. They're going to be caught with their pants down. They're gonna, like a thief is going to come in the middle of the night. And here, here I am. Jesus Christ returns with the holy angels and all of a sudden you're not right. You don't have any oil in your lamp. Okay, you, you weren't ready for it. Okay, you don't, you're not right with him. If you're not right, with the understanding, be intellectual enough to be honest, okay? Because that's, fundamentally, that's your soul, that's your integrity, that's your honor. That's your conscience is wrapped up in honesty. So what good is all the intellect in the world if you don't have that? So the truly intellectual people are at least honest. And they're nice people. They're kind-hearted. They're pure of heart. They're godly. They're holy. They're good Americans. They're egalitarians. They believe in equality. Not for some, but for everybody, Okay? has nothing to do with individuality. A whole other can of worms is individuality. You can't lose. That's impossible to lose individuality. But we are all equal. And unless you prescribe to that, you're on the highway to hell. As far as I can tell, I mean, there's no equivocation there. You're on the highway to hell. You're unforgiven because you haven't confessed you need forgiveness for a belief in inequality. Because then you become the judge, jury, and executioner of how much inequality is okay. And uh, that... That's not all right, okay? And that's that keeps you in the muddied and bloodied waters that have been muddied and bloodied on purpose through death and destruction by these evil-doing Luciferians that have imposed this on society. They, they act all altruistic and, no, we're, we're the nice guys, you know, but they're liars, they're deceivers, they're cheaters, they're murderers. That's who they are. They're Satanists. That's all they've got is what their father teaches them to have. And they're monsters. They're trying to render us in their image and likeness. How's that going to work? How long are, is it going to work? How long are we going to keep a society cohesive when that's who they're making us like? They're making us like themselves. Insane people. Without understanding. Confused. Without true intellect. Because we are mean, unkind, incompassioned human beings. All right, let's see. What else do I have to uh, go back on here? Let's see. I was talking about uh, Marxism. Oh, I know. I was thinking about the guy behind that. It's Karl Marx, right? That's where that came. Karl Marx, Marxism. But uh, anyhow, I talked about how I'd be a bad socialist because I'm not stealing nothing. I'm not taking nothing from anybody. I just want to add to it. I think that's what God would do. There's plenty for everybody. There is no true ownership. God is the only one that owns stuff. If you own it, it means you get to keep it forever. I mean, right? No. It's all usership. We're all just passing through. That's not being negative. That's not conjecture. That's science. We're all passing through. We only use stuff while we're here, and then somebody else uses that stuff. Okay? That's the way it works. So it's all usership. There is no real ownership of anything. And remember, I am a fiscal conservative. Okay? I believe in fixing stuff. And yes, I like conservative values. I'm against abortion and all this. And I've got some conservative values. Believe me, I do. I like conservative people. I like straight people. And I don't mean gay. Or I don't mean it in the gender sense. I mean straight, like, you know, they're straight shooters. They're conservatives. They're kind of, uh, you know, gentlemanly kind of people. And I, I like that in people. And I also like uh, liberal people. I like generous people. I like kind-hearted people. I like, you know, I don't see anything wrong with the bleeding heart liberal for the most part that, like myself, that says, look, I don't want to be rich until I at least see, you know, the wound on the collective body of humanity bound up where it's hemorrhaging. And that's the people dying on the, at the, you know, on the streets, that, at, the, at the bottom of the, of the barrel, the weak links of this chain of humanity. The least of men, like Jesus said, these are the ones I'm talking about, the ones that succumb to the system. They say, no, I don't want to be a criminal, so I'm not going to go break the law and cost everybody 50000 a year. But, uh, you know, I just don't, I can't conform. I can't fit into the system. I'm a misfit. Exactly the way Jesus said we should be. You're not supposed to fit into the system. So we're going to pick on these people and think that that's okay, and we're going to stand before our God someday and justify this when we've got uh, a huge excess of housing in America. We could end homelessness tomorrow and have still have uh, you know 90 percent of the vacant available housing left over and you're going to stand before god and you're going to in any way try to justify that reality okay 
you're going to stand before him and you're going to say that in any way, shape, or form is okay with you, even though we taxpayers collectively are paying $50 billion a year to prevent homelessness, to make sure housing is affordable for the least of men. And this is, this is the result. God help us. You see what I mean? I don't have any faith in man. I, you know, this is where I say I got to jump ship. I cannot throw my pearls before swine. At some point, I got to say it's every man for himself. And I'm over here in the clean, clear water. I get it. I'm, I'm, I believe in, you know, that's it, man. That's it. Let the conscience be your guide. So if you say, well, a minimum guaranteed income, they might just be lazy and just be on drugs and stuff. And, you know, we don't want to do that and babysit them and just keep keep giving them fish. Even though it's not you giving them the fish, it's somebody else's. It's God doing the gift fish giving. He's the one that said this is the way to do it because there is no jobs. All of a sudden you see once this one little problem gets solved, everything like dominoes falls into effect. We put out the bonfire, all the spot fires start going out. Everybody becomes free and people are just doing useful jobs that don't revolve around the problems, that actually revolve around things getting better and better and better and better, a lower and lower work week. So gradually things just get better and better. And that's, you know, the end of the story. So, folks, anyhow, yeah, I talked about these big name preachers. I know Gerald Flurry is another guy I watch on TV. I like him. I like. I don't agree with everything he says. I don't agree with everything Hell Lindsay says, but. You know, I like to hear their take, and I like to hear their prophecy, their take on, on prophecy and how, you know, this, you know, closing in on the last days before the return of Christ, how this is really feels more and more imminent, you know, from Scripture. They could point to evidentiary uh, teachings like Jesus gave us, signs of the end of the age, you know, and, and before the beginning of the new age and all this. So I do like to listen to these people. But Billy Graham is another one of those big-name people. I, I like a lot of these people, but... You know, like I said, I myself don't have any desire to ever be famous uh, in any way. But uh, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shrink away from speaking what I have to doing what I have to do. You know, I, I might find greatness, but you know, it'll be God that'll judge that. It's the same way Jesus said. Look, in the Beatitudes of the Bible, he said, "It is the peacemakers that shall be called sons of God." And even though the righteous out there may not care about being term you know title a son of god or daughter of god okay same thing mankind is womankind then uh, nevertheless you can't let that prevent you from doing his will from being his friend his good loyal faithful servant because of your own free will and accord because that's it god doesn't say do this or do that don't do this or else you're going to hell or you know this is the only way that you're not going to hell it's not like that he's not a harsh taskmaster like jesus said he explained his yoke is easy as load is light this is the most practical best way this is the intellectual way. this is the honest way this is the childlike way the simplistic way the logical way the mathematic way the clear cool waters way you know the way he tells us to do things does that mean it's all going to be easy? We're always going to be wearing rose-colored glasses? No, because it's no fun to confront evil and expose evil. You meet with a lot of resistance. And I talked about how this, you know, the political controversy out there. Not, forget Democrat, Republican. That's panty waste compared to the kind of uh, controversy I'm talking about. I'm talking about money controversy, like affordable housing. That is antithetical to those that want high rents and mortgages that want to keep this train a chugging in the direction of the trajectory, this descent into hell, ever growing wealth disparity, uh, it making it just not harder and harder to crack and harder and harder for people into the middle class of home ownership and prosperity, you know, making that bar harder and harder to reach. So it goes against that. So understand, I know what I'm, I see it as clear as the light of day, okay? And you can too. We all can. It's simple. I'm a simple-minded guy. I'm a logical guy. And I'm willing to do the math and say, you know, you can't label me a libtard, okay? You can't label me a neocon. You can name me the best of both because that's all I strive to be. I say, I'll do the math with you. You want fiscal conservatism? Lower taxes? I'm down. You have less abortion? Yeah, what... What induces a woman to get an abortion most of the time? She can't afford to raise the kid. So you say you want to stop abortion, but you don't believe in a minimum guaranteed income? 
Okay, do you understand how this thing works? Okay, it should be God deciding. God didn't invent money. Man invented money. It is not God withholding prosperity from you from birth as a birthright. It is men. And any man that would withhold it from you is evil and determined and bent and bound to hell. Okay, that is not me speaking. That is not a judgment call or opinion on my part. Okay, that is from Scripture. That is the God that is, spells his name out clearly. He wants the captives to be set free, and they will be set free. We've got to understand what that freedom entails. Absolute, complete, total freedom means being financially free from the money masters who have done this to us by using Satan's ambrosia. It's a satanic ploy. It's a trickery. It's deceit. Okay, we can be free. We've got to wean ourselves off the junk 